fifth Sunday after Pentecost. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us begin this worship with a hymn. Our opening hymn is, This is My Song. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts be open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our heart by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Children, when I was in India, when my son was very little, like any other parents in India, I put my son in a very affluent, in a big school. In India, schools are, most of the schools are private if you have to get good education. So we have to pay a lot of money uh, for our kids' education. So you are all very privileged in this country. Uh, education is, most of the time, it is free. But in India, it's very, very expensive. So I put my son in a very uh, big school. Uh, it's very affluent and all very wealthy people. Uh, so pastors are uh, uh, not really, uh, you know, um, affluent people in, in, in the context. So, because I was a pastor of a, a big church, I was given that privilege to get my son admitted in a big school. But every day I used to drop my son on a motorbike. So in my context, pastor having a car is uh, not something uh, uh, common. Only very few pastors will have cars in that time, I don't know this time, now how it is. But when I was there, uh, it's usually motorbike. We use the motorbike. Even though if you have a car, most of the time motorbikes are very economical. So we use the motorbikes. So I go and drop my son at school every day. So one day what happened is, when we were visiting my um, wife's house, um, my son, little son, went to uh, my grandpa, went to his grandpa, my wife's uh, father. And he said, Daddy is dropping me in that school. Uh, I like that school very much. But every day, my daddy is dropping me in motorbike. But all my friends come in car every day. That's how he said Fortunately or unfortunately, I would say fortunately, it has happened. My uh, father-in-law, my son's grandpa, decided to buy a car for us. I was so happy. One fine day he called, he said, get all your documents, and he got that car for us. I was so happy I got that car. I don't tell my people in India how I got that car, because everybody will try the same thing. But this little kid did that. But after a year, he went to grandpa, the same grandpa he went. And he said, Grandpa, thank you so much. I'm so happy. Every day, Daddy drops me in the car. But Grandpa, I have another problem. He said, what happened? Now you have a car. You should enjoy it. He said, all my friends are coming in different cars. But my father drops me, my dad drops me in the same car. He understood what he is up to. Somehow he managed and he sent him back. What I'm trying to say is, this world is something like that. Everything that we see, we wanted it. Because so much around us are like that. But we should be 
happy with what God has given to us, what our parents have, what our family have, and we should be happy about it. God will definitely bless. So I see my son now he's grown uh, up. He is graduated from high school. Now he's going to a college. And I'm so happy he didn't allow me to pay a single dollar also. Even for the college, I don't have to pay anything from my pocket. He has done well. So depending on God, God will definitely bless you. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the abundance of blessing and your presence that you have so equally given in our life, especially help the children that they grow with the content, with the contentment that you have given enough for them. And they'll be, they'll grow in fear and knowledge and be a greater blessing to the community and for Christ's sake. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The servant said to Laban, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master and he has become wealthy. He has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old and he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred, and get a wife for my son. I came today to the spring and said, O oh Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will only make successful the way I am going. I am standing here by the spring of water, let the young woman who comes out to draw, to whom I shall say, please give me a little water from your jar to drink, and who will say to me, drink, and I will draw for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her water jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew. I said to her, please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, drink and I will also water your camels. So I drank and she also watered the camels. Then I asked her, whose daughter are you? She said, the daughter of Bethuel, Naar's son, whom Milcah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms. Then I bowed my head and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to obtain the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so that I may turn either to the right hand or to the left. And they called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will. So they sent away their sister Rebekah and her nurse along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of myriads. May your offspring gain possession of the gates of their foes. Then Rebekah and her maids rose up, mounted the camels, and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebekah and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Beer Lahiroi and was settled in the Negev. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field, and looking up, he saw camels coming. And Rebekah looked up, and when she saw Isaac, she slipped quickly from the camel and said to the servant, 
Yes. Thanks be to God. One is the reading in unison, the Song of Solomon, found on page seven of your service leaflets. The voice of my beloved, look, he comes, leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he all, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Sixteen to nineteen and twenty-five. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came either neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. It is the best of times, it is the worst of times. The age of wisdom, the age of foolishness, the epoch of belief, the epoch of incredulity, the season of light, the season of darkness. We have everything before us. We have nothing before us. It is the spring of hope. It is the winter of despair. All of us are going directly to heaven and all of us are going the other way. These are the words of Charles Dickens in his book, The Tale of Two Cities. He is talking about the world which is conflicting, the world which is chaotic, the world which is challenging. He's telling the world is good as well as bad. The, the world has everything and it has nothing. He's just presenting how this world is contradicting. The simple purpose of life is mounted on our needs. And today we see everything the best that we have have become a burden in our life. Everything seems to be good, but still we feel burdened. 
We see how this world is giving excuses in the way of technology. Freedom, individuality, and comfort and luxury. We give these are the reason for what we have mounted on it. But today, everything seems to be too much to handle. That is why today, all of us are talking about vacation, yoga, private time, family time, all kind of times we are talking about. Because every day we wanted to balance our life physically, emotionally, and spiritually. We are trying to handle. Every day, it's, it's, it is a balancing act, an attempt to cope with contradicting factors often and situation at the same time, as the Webster Dictionary says, the balancing act. We are trying to cope with it. Every day we go to bed thinking next day will be better. Tomorrow we will be better. Don't we say to our children, don't touch that, don't talk to them, don't go there. Why? It's fear. We are worried. We are scared. Our life is contradicting. I don't blame others. We need to blame ourselves. The simple purposeful life has been mounted on so many things. Our needs, our wants, our greeds in the name of technology, freedom and comfort. As a pastor, I've been a pastor for more than 20 years. I have taught major world religion in my context. I've been working as a chaplain in a hospital where I went through the residency. I have interacted with so many diverse communities. I have worked in social organizations. I have read so many isms and ethos. But I tell you, nothing is so convincing, welcoming, and comforting than the words of Jesus Christ. He says in the gospel reading, Matthew 11, 28 to 30, come unto me, all those who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. The yoke, my yoke, I will give my yoke you learn from me. My heart is gentle and humble. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. However, individually, this, these verses are so comforting, welcoming, and uh, soothing also. Most of the time we need to understand all this being said, not just, for, not just for individuals, it is for the community. So in that perspective, when we look at these words, in the words of Matthew, Matthew, gospel writer, as I keep telling about Matthew, is talking about Jesus as God's Messiah. And Jesus' message is about the kingdom of God. And our mission, we are the mission, and we take these values of the kingdom so that we would extend the kingdom. In the light of it, when we look at the chapter 11, the verse third, where the disciples of John the Baptist come there and ask Jesus, are you the one are you the one who is to come, 
or we need to wait for anyone else. So the whole chapter is based on answering that question. And Jesus says, this generation. Whenever in the gospel or in the Bible, if you look at it, this generation has been used as a very negative connotation. connotation. It, it reveals that community is so adamant. This community is unwilling to accept both John the Baptist as well as Jesus, the son of man. The community is so reluctant because it is not ready to come out of its need, out of its own religiosity, out of its own culture, the tradition, everything that is built on it. And Jesus says, if you know me, you know my father. No one knows my father without me. So in this light, when we look at this verse, 28, and, uh, 28 to 30, come unto me, all those who are weary and heavy burdened, I will give you rest. The two words, rest and yoke. Rest, anaposis, the Greek word, it talks about stop the motion, any motion that is stopped. And little further, Sabbath rest, it defines what rest means. But here Jesus says, my yoke, if you have my yoke, you will find rest for your souls. So it is much more fulfilling, holistic. So what Matthew is saying in the words of Jesus, rest is a metaphor for kingdom of God. So rest is that you come into the kingdom of God, then you will find the rest. That is why it says come, learn, and find. It's not easy, right? It's not just comes like that, but you have to come, you have to learn, and you have to find. So rest is something that you come into that kingdom. And when we look at the other metaphor, yoke, that this is my yoke. You take my yoke. It is very common term in Jewish understanding. They understand what Jesus is about. It has been used for oxen, you know, for cultivation and uh, uh, agriculture. And also it has been used for war slaves and prisoners. So that is why it has been addressed as uh, all those who are weary, physically, hardship, those who are doing, and also people who are heavy burden. As a pastor, I have learned that everybody is important, rich or poor, illiterate or literate, whether they are influential or not, everyone is important. And we see what Paul says in that perspective, the sinners, we are slaves to law. We are sinners. I would say sinners are uh, uh, not in a very theological or doctrinal sense. I don't want to talk. But sinners are someone who could uh, realize the mistakes. Realize that I am wrong. In my context, uh, in my long service, I never preached on a woman Sunday or on child, girl child Sunday. I don't preach. I always tell them, I'm already in the pit digging. How could I close the pit? I'm already part of this very oppressive, abusive system. How can I uh, redeem? I'm already feeling guilty of it. So that realization is something that we understand. Miracle that Jesus did on the cross than any other miracle. What he did on the cross is beautiful because we are sinners. All of us are equal. So taking the yoke is that we take the love. We take the 
unity. We take the peace. We take the justice. That is the values of the kingdom. We see in the Old Testament, Abraham trying to do something. He has become rich. He's sending his servant to find a girl for Isaac. And she should not be a Canaanite. Go somewhere else. Go to my father's place and find it. His, his life, he may be a, 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 a father of faith, we could say, but his life is messy. And he wanted to correct it. But the good thing is, he had the power, presence, and the promise of God. When we are in the kingdom of God, we will have that power, the presence, and the promise of God to love one another, to unite one another, reconcile, to extend peace, and also withstand justice. A neighbor called 911 and said there was a gunshot next to their house. So the cop came, he took the gun, and before entering the house, he, as usual, he shouted, and he asked, is there anybody inside? And there was a woman voice came from inside. She said, I'm inside. Then the cop said, somebody called me. There was a gunshot heard in your house. She said, it is I who shot. Then he asked, what did you do? She said, I shot my husband. I killed my husband. And he said, what happened? She said, from morning I'm cleaning the house. And the floor was wet. My husband stamped on it and made it dirty. So I got very angry and I shot him. By the time this cop got a call from a superior, maybe sheriff, he called and said, did you arrive at that place? And the cop said, yes, I'm there. Then uh, who, who is inside? The woman is inside. She shot her husband because the floor was wet and he stamped on it. Then the sheriff asked the cop, why are you still outside? Why don't you go inside and uh, arrest that lady? And the cop said, the floor is still wet. The floor is still wet. As Christians, as a church, still we are thinking, let the right time come. Let us have our convenient time to step in. We are not ready to take risk. But Jesus wants us to step into the kingdom of God. And God takes control of us, giving that power to suffer, power to reconcile. And he gives his presence and promise so that we could establish, re-establish that love, that unity, peace, and justice. This great country, the greatest country in the world, is built on these values of the kingdom. Love, peace, justice. Not because this country can win wars. Not because it has found great inventions. Believe me, it is because of the great values of the kingdom of God. We live in the glory of the past. Let us not destroy it. Already we have damaged it. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us all stand and affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He was spoken through the prophet. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. With grateful hearts we pray to our loving God, saying we thank you, Father, you hear the voice of your beloved. Loving God, you call your church my love and my beauty. Look upon your church with eyes of great We especially pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Dion, our bishop, Leslie, our priest, Sally, our priest associate, and Clive, our supply priest. In our Missouri Diocese, we pray for the people and ministry of St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Sykeston and Annette, their rector. In our companion diocese of Louis, we pray for Buagi Parish and Facili, the priest. May we generously share the love with, with, with which we have been so greatly blessed. We thank you, Father. You hear the voice of your beloved. Loving God, you have blessed our nation with great freedoms. Grant us and all the people of this land the grace to maintain our liberties in righteousness and peace. We thank you, Father. You hear the voice of your beloved. Loving God, all that you have created tells of your love for us. May flowers and birds, but even more so, our human relationships remind us of your great care and presence. We thank you, Father. You hear the voice of your beloved. Loving God, you promise to give rest to all those who carry heavy burdens. Lift up those who are weighed down by the burdens of violence, depression, and despair. We thank you, Father. You hear the voice of your beloved. Loving God, your son Jesus revealed your heart to be gentle and humble. We pray for those who have restless souls. We especially pray for Jasmine Chan, Sister Janine Kuhn, Diane Metzger, Kenny Harper, Evie LaRock, and Jim Duncan. We pray that all the sorrowful and the suffering may find their rest in you. We thank you, Father. You hear the voice of your beloved. Loving God, you rescue us from death. We pray that all who have died, especially Polly Coase, and all who have died due to COVID-19, and those who strive for freedom and peace, may come to know that heavenly comfort you have prepared for us. We thank you, Father. You hear the voice of your beloved. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may care and know ourselves to be surrounded by the witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and in deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may live in your will and walk in your name. Amen. May the Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you from all your sins, through Lord our Savior Jesus Christ, and strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Welcome to everybody on this uh, July 4th holiday weekend, and uh, especially to our guest priest, the Reverend Dr. Clive Sampson. We're thankful to Clive for filling in while Mother Leslie is on vacation. She'll be gone for another week, and week after next she'll be back with us. I'd like to also remind everybody that while Mother Leslie is gone, that Pastor Sally will be taking pastoral care calls. So if you have a need, give her a call. Her contact information is uh, listed in the uh, beacon. Please join us after today's service at 11.45 for the coffee bunch on Zoom. It's a great way to see and talk to everybody uh, as we try to continue to maneuver our online worship and our lives during the coronavirus pandemic. The link to the coffee hour is uh, found in this week's beacon. I invite you to look for other announcements in the beacon to keep up with uh, what's happening, not only at St. Martin's, but in our community and diocese as well. Everybody have a good week ahead of time and wear your mask, wash your hands, uh, stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Let us prepare and participate in the spiritual communion. Pray for spiritual communion. Let us say together, in union, O Lord, with the faithful of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we decide to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We present to you our souls and bodies with the earnest wish that we may always be united to you. And since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all the love of your souls. Let nothing ever separate you from us. May we live in you. May you live in us, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood, to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. May the true God of all things who sent forth the Holy Spirit upon the apostles in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. Send the Spirit now upon you to guard you and impart to you her bounty, that the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control may be yours this day and forever. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.